Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. Today we are going to have a long ass chat, okay? So I'm gonna sit you down and don't worry, I will keep this as entertaining, as informative, as zippy as possible. First things first, it's my birthday to today actually. Happy birthday! On the 15th of October is the day of my birthday. Every year I do an annual sale. Everything on my store is 15% off when you spend $20 or more. So use the code birthday15 on my shop at zekeslunchbox.com. And uh, yeah, grab yourself something nice and all money in pandemic times is very, very much appreciated. So head over, get an art print. All the most popular tarot card art prints are now available on my shop. So it's filled with the best of the best in terms of all the tarot prints. So yeah, grab something and help out the channel and help out my art. Speaking of tarot cards, the major arcana project is done. I can't imagine anybody who is viewing this is possibly new or if you're kind of new-ish or if this is your very first video. Very rare for this to be your very first video on Zeke's Lunchbox because this is a very niche subject matter and uh, it's more of a talking updating video. I've been working on a tarot card project for the last two and a half years or so. I started around April 2018. It's taken me this whole time to do 22 paintings. I have all of those paintings or a big majority of the paintings on my channel documented where I talk about the whole process, talk about the struggles with it, talk about the symbols of everything. So you can catch up and watch everything uh, in the playlist below. So over the last two years, I've been really fleshing out what the Zeke's Arcana universe looks like. It's been a massive learning curve really trying to figure out what my tarot world looks like, uh, what the mood and the vibe and the color schemes all look like, what the characters are going to look like. And not just that, I've been learning what tarot means as well, what all the symbols mean. And I feel like doing this project, I'm going to have long lasting repercussions of learning all the symbols in tarot. Not just about learning the history of tarot, but also what symbols and common visual language so many people use throughout history and what I can incorporate and use into future projects. I've done an absolutely terrible job educating you guys about tarot. I know not everybody is very familiar with tarot. I still, after two years, I haven't memorized every card and all the symbols of it. I still have to look everything up. Luckily enough, there's so many resources online to, you know, see the breakdowns of tarot cards and know what all the little symbols mean. Going forward, I definitely need to do a better job educating you guys and helping you understand all the different symbols of the tarot card project. Oh, I just remembered why I came here. So I have been drawing the cover and uh, drawing the back of the cards and side of the box for the tarot cards. Really just playing around with what the branding is going to look like. And I have waited this long to do it because I really needed to see what a bunch of paintings looked like before I really went into the Zeke's Arcana specific branding. I did draw this up a while ago, maybe a year ago, something like that. On Instagram, I kind of went through through all of the symbols and broke down everything, but I think I'll, I'll talk about that possibly in a different video. If you want me to talk about all the different symbols in the front cover and the main art, let me know if you're interested in that. I don't know, I was thinking of doing like a big update video for people who are interested. I need to make a official video so it's just out there and people can refer back to it. In terms of if it's something that people actually wanna watch, I'm not too sure. That's the proposed colors that I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm not going to render it too much digitally just yet. I'd like to move on to the Cintiq and then I'm also going to be painting with Clip Studio Pro. After lots and lots of research I've just found that I think Clip Studio is going to be the most efficient and that's really what I'm going for. In terms of how much you can customize the workspace, I really love how much you can do that with Clip Studio. I love the look of all the brushes over there. So that's primarily where I will be painting the rest of the minor arcana cards, as well as like all the branding stuff like this. <laughs>
the Minor Arcana. I've gone through and planned the colors that I'll be using. Color is very important in my work. Obviously, it's the number one thing people mention when they discuss my work just how insane all the colors are and how saturated everything is. Color theory and the story that goes throughout all of the colors is very important to me. So what is in the Minor Arcana? The Minor Arcana is made up of four suits. So pentacles, cups, wands, and swords. In each suit, there is a ace to 10, just like with playing cards. And then there's also a page, a knight, a queen, and a king of each suit. So that is how many cards that I need to make for the minor arcana. 56 cards in the minors and 22 in the majors. At the top of this video, I said, it has taken me almost 2.5 years to make 22 paintings. So now you're probably doing the math and calculating, wait, the Minor Arcana have 56 cards. It took you 2.5 years to do 22. It's going to take you five years to do 56 cards. The answer is no. Spoiler alert. Record scratch. And that's because the Minor Arcana are a lot more simplified. A very divisive subject matter in tarot is when artists do this project, they get a lot of critique when they do a pip style deck. So the original Rider Waite deck has lots of different characters throughout the Major Arcana. I won't be doing that, which I think will be disappointing for a couple of people, but it's either do the really hard route and it takes me years to do and finish this project, and we don't have any more years. We are running out of time. This project needs to come to an end. I need to work on other things that aren't tarot. There's a lot of plans that I have basically. So I need to do a pip style deck and just because it's pip, I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. Just because it, let's just say it's an abbreviated, broken down, simplified version of the Rider Waite deck. I don't, in my opinion, I don't believe that makes it less than because although my art is very maximum, Maximalist, I still appreciate minimalism and I want to teach you guys to appreciate minimalism too. That being said, my pip deck is by a minimalist standard, not minimalism. A maximalist standard, it is minimalism. I am really excited by this. I often say in my job description that I'm an artist and designer. I like to think that I can do both and that I do have a compositional designer eye. I am trained as a designer. That is what my university degree background is. I like to believe that I have an eye for design. I do commercial illustration and design work to keep the ship running. I'm really excited to show you what I've made so far with the Minor Arcana and explain exactly uh, the choices that I'm going to be making throughout. Okay, so let me break down the sword, wands, cups, and pentacles. I'm going to probably mistakenly say coins every now and then instead of pentacles, but pentacles and coins are, for argument's sake, are the same thing. So swords are typically meant to represent a double-sided take. So while it can represent virtuous thought, the other side can also be abuse of power and uh, swords are often aligned with Gemini, Aquarius and Libra. So those signs are kind of very much about duality. So I'm excited to work on swords. Swords is, you know, when I was making the mages, I was most excited for the swords. I will show you the sword that has inspired the design that I've made. I have made one sword minor arcana so far. Here it is. I'm very excited about how strong and and intense all the pinks and reds are in this one. It's incredibly gaudy. It's incredibly, I don't know how else to say it, but for me, it just feels incredibly queer. It reminds me of like very 90s Versace, Sailor Moon vibes, but make it a little bit more like edgy. It's incredibly Zeke. <laughs> so I'll show you the sword that inspired this. I got this sword in a trip to Thailand and I was like, this is it. So a lot of the minor suits are inspired by Sailor Moon toys. In preparation to this, I was following a bunch of vintage Japanese toy accounts on Instagram. I think the most notable one is Mokana Toys. All of the toys on there are just amazing. I love vintage toys. If I could, I would collect those Sailor Moon like 
like token paraphernalias and I would also collect every Polly Pocket and every My Little Pony and every troll there is. I love all of that nostalgia. It brings me so much joy. In fact, I have a original cell of a Care Bears illustration from the 80s cartoon. All of that is incredibly Zeke. That's where all of my inspiration comes from, uh, which are featured in the Magician card. That's where the inspiration comes from. The major difference with the Major Arcana and the Minor Arcana is that I think the Major Arcana are some of the weaker designs in the original Rider Waite deck. I think they're really clunky. I think the perspective is all weird. That's why I just did like a full rehash and I wanted to do my take and just get to the main thick of what the story in each card tells and exemplify that in my own version. The Minors, however, I love all the designs in the miners. I think they're really strong. They're just so striking and that could be a photo shoot and a really strong photo. All of the miners are already perfect and I don't feel like I can improve them. Think of me doing this project as like a musician doing a cover of a famous song. Personally don't believe there's any point in, to, in doing a cover unless you were doing it better than the original. So an example that I like to think of and this is incredibly boom of me but it's the only cover I can think of right now. Think of Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower and then the version we all know is the Jimi Hendrix version. That being said, I don't know if I can outdo these and therefore I'm not going to try. I think the minor arcana cards are very striking and I think a lot of artists are really drawn to the minor cards because they are incredibly striking. Visual, lots of air around them. They're just so much stronger than, than the majors. I love them. Okay, so now that I have shown you guys the three of swords i'm super excited to show you the ones that i have been working on over the last couple of days so because i've already done so much hard work creating the major arcana cards i'm just going to take a lot of the inspiration and the worlds that I've already created, put them into the minor arcana cards. This way, everything looks really succinct. It all works together cohesively. And also because all the major arcana cards, they're like, think of them as the main stories or the main locations of the stories. The minor arcana cards are meant to reside in the places and the environments that I've already made. So it's kind of exciting. The environments that I've created, I can see them feeling like the actual worlds that I've been inhabiting and they're a little bit more fleshed out. So for example, the ones cards are going to be based on the sun color scheme. So, you know, it's got the sky in the background and the pink bubbles down below. And I'll basically just be using this scene as inspiration for the wands. Super excited to see more iterations of these. Like I mentioned in my last video, I am switching over to digital to just flesh out the project and really finish it and really see the light at the end of the tunnel. These three cards I was able to do one per day. Each one does require a little bit of tweaking and you know a new environment for me to draw. Because I'm not that strong with environments it does take me a little bit longer to figure them out but I'm super excited with the speed of things. For context the other cards did take me around two weeks or so to paint and render so the speed of things has just you know it hasn't even halved it's like an eighth of what it was before so I'm very excited to show you guys and pump out these cards like crazy. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any. Okay, are you ready? We are going to talk about the Kickstarter. I haven't talked to you guys all too much about the Kickstarter projects at all. And yes, projects multiple. Let's get into it. The tarot card project is not going to just be available on my shop just like that, just like any other product for a bunch of reasons. I think just launching it on my website is incredibly anticlimactic. It doesn't get you guys involved and we can't build a lot more buzz that is beyond our community. I want to reach a wider audience because tarot is such a big classic trope in the art world. Tarot cards are always going to be around and there are always going to be a cold audience that can discover the tarot card project. That's why the big Kickstarter will be on Kickstarter and that's the main 
goal of it is to reach a cold audience. And by cold audience, if you're unfamiliar, is people who have never heard of Zeke's Lunchbox before. You guys are a warm audience. We are a whole community here and you guys know exactly what is going on. But tarot can be beyond that. And that's the goals that I have for my career. I want to reach a wider audience that isn't so niche and small. I like to deem my art successful by reaching a wide audience. That's why I want to work on more murals and why I'm working on a tarot card project. I want my art to be seen by as many eyes as possible. That's going to be one of the big projects that will be happening in 2021, hopefully early 2021. By the rate of how I'm making all the minor arcana cards, I think we will be really good in actually getting to that date. If I average at 10 cards a month, this will be finished. And 10 cards, like I said, I've been averaging one a day. So that's super achievable. I think 10 is the minimum. The big Kickstarter will include a tarot card box with a booklet on all the information on every single card and all the little details and breakdowns of all the symbols, layouts that you can do with it, and also a quick rundown of the history of how everything was made that you guys are experiencing and witnessing here, and so many other things. The booklet I'll think about later on. It'll have 78 cards, uh, 22 major cards, and 56 minor cards. That being said, a stretch goal is to have bonus cards, so big complaint in the tarot deck is that it's not celestial enough and I want to add I think five new cards that are purely celestial. That's all I can say about it now you guys will just have to wait and also pledge to make those extra cards happen. Another thing that will be happening with the big project is I will be opening up commissions in the big kickstarter where you guys will be able to pledge and pay to be in the tarot deck. I will be doing portraits of the kings, queens, pages, and knights, and I will be selling a couple of spots in there so your portrait can be included in the tarot deck. I personally feel like that is insane. An incredible opportunity to be included and printed and your portrait made into the deck. It's an amazing way to get you guys involved uh, with the deck as much as possible. Another thing that will be included in the big Kickstarter is the originals will also be for sale and those are all the cards that you guys have witnessed being made. That's just a couple of things that will be in the big Kickstarter and that's just a couple of things that I want to get you guys excited about so you keep following and you keep spreading the word of Zeke's Arcana. There will be a Kickstarter this year though. So let's talk about it. At the end of November, we will be hosting a mini Kickstarter and we may be doing a second Kickstarter in early 2021. That one is TBD, to be determined, depending on how this one goes. Why we're doing a little mini Kickstarter first is because my tarot partner and I have never done a Kickstarter. I don't exactly want to go all in and try and raise $20,000 in the big one. I think it's really risky and a little scary and we have no idea what we're really doing over there. So we're doing the mini Kickstarter one, build a Kickstarter audience to get you guys used to ki using Kickstarter. Three, Julian and I can learn how to use Kickstarter and then we can see what needs to be improved for the big one. And four, because we'll be taking the money that we raise from this Kickstarter and if we need it, we'll have a little safety net for the big one. Fingers crossed. It's very, very very scary. You guys better pitch in. Like truly, if we if we have unsuccessful Kickstarters, I'm quitting art. That That's just like straight up, I'm quitting, I'm finding a job. Okay? No more art for anybody. I quit if this Kickstarter doesn't work. Okay, I'm half joking. Half joking. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye! <laughs>